Mario likes to drive with them and you like to shop with them. Today we're talking about carts. Whether you want to call them buggies, shopping carts, grocery carts, shopping trolleys, whatever you want to call them, you use them every day. Often, you misuse them every day. Now, as someone who, again, has worked 30... I'm going to keep saying this because you people don't want to pay attention. As, having over 13 years of experience working in grocery stores and in retail in general, I have seen things with my own four eyes that make me want to punch every single one of you in the head. Now, maybe you don't know. Maybe, maybe it's the simple fact of ignorance that you've never actually had to do the job of going out and getting carts. Fine, I understand that, but you know what? Take this opportunity of watching my little video here as an education, so that way you are beyond excuse for acting like a total idiot. With that said, let's start from the beginning as you approach the store. You drive into the store, in the parking lot. Now, here's what's funny, especially around Christmas time, or any other huge holiday where shopping is a pleasure. You pass 487 carts on your way inside the store. Then you look inside the store where the cart corral, or whatever you want to call it, is located. You look and immediately complain to the first person you see with a name tag that there are no carts at all for you to use. You are a gigantic moron. You have passed 487 carts on your way in. Is there something particularly wrong or evil or are you afraid you're going to catch some kind of venereal disease by taking one of the carts that are from outside and using them while you, sh while you shop? Was was there was every single one of them covered in bird duty? Was there something that did someone, did you see a, a rather large fat man um, regurgitate on these carts? Was there something particularly wrong with these carts that you could not get them and use them inside? I have actually did this. A customer would come in, how come there's no carts? I'm like, well, how many did you pass on the way in? And he's looking at me and walk you know, how dare you confront me with common sense and, you know, rational thinking. Okay, well, that, let's pass that. You have your cart. Now, for those of you who are, well, I don't want to use the word mature. I don't want to use the word adult, but because that's definitely not the case in most cases. Those of you who are parents, um, well, I don't know if I want to use that term anyway, but those of you who have children, now... If you have the, t the tiniest of children that goes inside the little car seat with their legs dangling out, do me and everyone else in store a favor, and other, other, other customers as well, is pay attention to the little seat. Because most of them, now most, I say most, now your mileage may vary, most of them have a little cartoon strip on them that shows you what not to do with your baby in the cart. Do not put them in the, in the basket part. Do not put them you know, on the underneath part where you put your bleach and your paper towels or your dog food or whatever. Don't put them there. Put them in the seat. Boom. Don't have them stand up. Don't have them hang on the side. Don't have them pick the thing up on their back and carry it for you. Nothing, okay? Put them in the little seat with their feet dangling out. That's what you do. Now, if your children are too big for this, there is an, a, a particular tool that you are supposed to use in conjunction with one that they have that will help problems with said child. Now, this will be in another video, just to let you know. I'm jumping ahead of myself in my schedule. It's called a hand. Now, now this is interesting. When you c connect this to the hand that your child has and, and grasp firmly but gently, this will solve a lot of freaking problems, but push that over for another video. We're talking about carts today, not the incredibly stupid people who, for some reason, have decided to procreate. Carts. Now, let's say you have your child properly stowed away, or you don't have a kid at all, or you left them at home, which would be ideal. But you, you know, you're going through the store. Now, I've had people leave their carts on the side on the end of the aisle to go shopping down the aisle. Now, <clears throat> here's the problem with this. There are, there's two problems with this, with this issue. Number one is if 
the people who work in the store are doing what are called either go backs, take backs, or returns, which is basically all the things that some dork decided at the last possible minute he didn't want, so they has to go back or his returns. Stuff that actually got returned to the store because someone's cheap or the sale ended and they wanted to get more money back. Now these people who were doing returns, oftentimes, you know, they're pushing around a cart full of product and because they themselves don't want to walk up in an aisle, they'll, or if they happen to be lazy and just leave the thing there to go to lunch, someone else will come back behind them, pick it up and go. Now, if they just see a cart sitting there, abandoned, okay, which that's what it is, it's a cart abandonment when you just leave it there, they're going to take that cart and start putting stuff back. Now, I've actually had this happen to somebody that I knew. They're like, what happened to my cart? And I'm like, well, where'd you leave it? Oh, on the end of the aisle. Why? Like, well, someone probably took it thinking, you know, that it was returns that had to go back on the shelf. Why didn't you just take it down the aisle with you? Oh, oh I always do that. Not answering my question. I always do that. That's not a problem. The second big issue with, with abandoning your cart is the fact that someone else may be as dumb as you and leave their cart next to yours. I've had this happen. I don't know how many times I've worked in the grocery store and heard over the intercom, you know, bing, attention customers, if please check your baskets to make sure that you actually have your basket. Thank you. Now, this coupled with the fact that some women in spite of common sense and watching the news and just freaking thinking, leave their purses or any other belongings in the basket and wander off for who knows how long and then decide to come back and go, oh, my stuff got stolen. Yes, because you're a stupid moron. That's why. Take your crap with you. Take your cart with you down the aisle. Now, obviously, I know the, I know maybe the thinking that some of the aisles aren't exactly wide enough for, for, for more than one cart to go passing you know, intersecting. I understand that, but here's the thing. Watch my last video. Go ahead, I'll wait. Okay, maybe don't watch. Okay, now, do that! That'll solve a lot of problems right there, okay? Now, take the, I don't know, I mean, if you're that concerned about possibly running into things or whatever or, or not being able to physically get by then I I don't know what to tell you I mean because you can easily just like I said just say excuse me walk through boom you're done okay now with that said leaving leaving the store you bought all your items and now you're going to leave the store now technically this is not dealing with carts but it is related hand baskets little hand, hand baskets there are people who go through the line and they have their basket full of, you know, whatever things that they happen to want to buy that day. And they do several things with it. <clears throat> Number one, the more common one is that they will take everything out of the basket, put it on a conveyor belt, take the basket and put it wherever on the end of the register. Now, some times there's actually a spot unofficially there for those baskets the problem is there is no official place to put it okay now you may say well there's always a spot there at the back end of the register da, da, da. I've seen people act like they're doing a freaking Easter egg hunt with the thing or they're decorating a Christmas tree with their basket because they'll hang it on stuff or they'll put it on top of the display it's on the they'll do a lot of things except for just hand it to the cashier hand it to the bagger if there is one that's what they're there for. The other thing that people do, because they're stupid, or they're too busy playing with their phone or talking to somebody that came with them, is they will leave the basket as is, items piled inside, they'll just put that boom on the conveyor belt and expect the cashier who has had to deal with crap all day long, all week long, to, to, to basically do a very, very small thing that you could easily do yourself. Now, you may be arguing with me saying, well, if it's such a small thing, why is it even an issue? Well, see, here's the thing. You, you only see the cashier for about, what, 
10, maybe 15 minutes, depending on how, how big your order is or how long the line is. The cashier sees you for hours at a time, several times in a day. Now, when you have that much concentrated stupidity constantly thrown in your face, it will drive you nuts. It will drive you crazy. Some people will crack. Some people will go on machete-wielding rampages. Other people will just snap and constantly talk to themselves in an unutterable voice. Other people will snap in a completely opposite direction where everything's sunshine and roses. They smile all the time and nothing ever, ever get so upset. Someone crashed their car, oops, that's just life. And then Heath Ledger has, you know, inspiration for his Joker role. What I'm trying to say is, your exposure to the cashier is greatly, greatly minuscule compared to the cashier's experience, exposure to customers. Okay, let's get back to carts. At the checkout. Now, I've had people have a whole freaking grocery cart. They only have maybe a few small items. Understandable, I've done this. Maybe there's items that you don't want to carry out. Fine. Or you don't want to cart around the store. <laughs> so, you go up to the register. You pick up your... They usually... Now, I've seen this on countless occasions. It's mind-numbing. The bagger... Put the items in a basket. The customer will take the items, bags, out of the basket and walk away, leaving the cart sitting there. Now, what's hilarious is the fact that on your way out of the grocery store, again, nine times out of ten, I'm sure I'm going to have a comment or two from people who are the one in ten scenario, you will pass... The area that the cart will belong in on your way out. Now, let's go a little bit further. Let's say you have your cart and you pass through the doors. Now, I've actually seen this. These, these are the same people, but they, they, they're they a little more patient with themselves. They go out, they take the cart out the doors, passing the area where the carts belong. Prop the cart up against like a pillar or something of the part of the building, then take the items out and walk to their car. All they had to do was they passed it. Do you do you not see the frustration? These this is the reason why I make these videos to to inform those who who maybe do these things and are just completely ignorant of the fact that they're completely ignorant. It's an educational means by which hopefully you will learn and you will have a better shopping experience because, as Animaniacs has pointed out, do not irritate or anger the people who handle your food. Now, let's say you actually are intelligent enough to take the cart to your car. At least in my experience, the number has dwindled, is dwindling. But most grocery stores department stores that use carts on a regular basis like Walmart, Target, whatever. They have, within the parking lot, designated areas for you to put the carts away. Now, I understand that walking five feet, maybe ten feet in some cases, maybe a little bit longer depending on how, where it's situated and where you parked, may be a little bit difficult. Maybe you have leg problems or maybe, you know, you walk with a crutch or, uh, you know, a, a walker or something, or, you know, you, you're missing both your legs. I don't know. Whatever the situation may be, uh, you know, there, there are exceptions to the rule. There's no reason why you can't necessarily take it over there. Then there's people who purposefully park as close to the door as humanly possible because they want to be able to get in and get out for the sake of convenience. You people are just as guilty as the people who leave the cart right outside the door. Just mere few feet away from where it actually belongs. If you're going to park that close for convenience, make use of it. Okay? Now, there's your entire shopping experience and how to use your carts properly. 
now will this change anything will people see this video will people see this video and actually pay attention to it these are questions I highly that the answers to which I, I would probably give a no that's because folks you know I can tell you how to do things all day long and you are going to find ways to argue with me but for those of you who have worked retail those of you who have had to deal with these things those of you who get carts on a daily basis especially around the holidays first of all I feel for you second of all if you happen to be one of those people who is a as a bagger or cart return person then if you like this video please comment favorite and subscribe to my channel to see more of these videos however if you think that I am talking out of my butt and have no idea what I'm speaking of even though I have 13 years of experience and exposure to this kind of mental retardation that people exhibit every single day of their lives then you only serve to prove me right thanks for watching